Hey there, today I want to talk a little bit about how to successfully end a relationship with a narcissist. So ideally, when an individual decides that he or she wants to walk away from the relationship, they've had enough, um, the best thing to do would be to go no contact with a narcissistic partner. This basically means that you walk away, you cut all of your ties, cut your losses, uh, you cut all communication, and you never look back. This is much easier said than done, however, um, as we know, narcissists like to hoover, and hoover essentially means that they will continue to try to reach out, make contact, put stumbling blocks in this individual's path in order to make the individual feel weak um, or insufficient without the narcissistic partner, um, to keep them, you know, second guessing themselves and their independence and uh, continue to rely on the narcissistic partner so they continue to come back. So there are essentially three phases to a narcissistic relationship. In the first stage called the idealized stage, this is um, when everything seems perfect. So this is in the very initial stages of the relationship where the narcissist seems to say everything right, do everything right. Um, they're completely on point with all of your needs. Um, they seem to be that perfect partner, that Prince Charming that you've been waiting for. This stage doesn't last incredibly long, just long enough for the narcissist to feel as if they've, they've captured their prey. So when they feel like this person has worn down to dependence, uh, they will quickly switch to the devalue stage. In the devalue stage, the stage that lasts the longest in the narcissistic relationship, pretty much as long as the codependent or um, partner to the narcissist allows it to, um, is the stage that gives the narcissist all of his power. So in this stage is where the narcissist will flip a switch, start to lie and manipulate and, um, you know, basically devalue, it's called the devaluing st uh, stage, um, his partner, uh, make them, you know, question their own worth um, or, you know, make them completely reliant on the narcissist. So this is when they start to gaslight. They try to make a person feel as if they're crazy. Um, question their own perceptions of a situation. Um, and this gives the narcissist power because the person believes, you know, more so than ever that they do rely on the narcissist um, in order to survive. So um, this continues to allow the narcissist to keep his victim trapped. And then there's the discard stage. The discard stage is the final stage of the narcissistic relationship. And generally, um, I bring this up here because it can happen after an individual has decided to walk away. So if you decide to walk away from a relationship with a narcissist and you do not cut all ties, you don't go no contact with a narcissistic partner, um, he continues to reach out, he continues to put these stumbling blocks or communications or whatever in your path um, to, um, you know, make sure that you cannot completely make a clean sweep or, you know, break free from him and you allow this to happen and you go back, um, this is what basically the narcissist is looking for. So what, it, what he'll do is he'll allow you to step away from the situation. He will hoover until you decide to come back. And once you decide to come back, he will perform his discard. In the discard stage, um, the narcissist will make sure that you are treated like you never have been before. So he will get you back long enough, um, play his game long enough to do something that could really essentially be harmful to you. So he could either up his game a level um, and be, you know, you know, lie and manipulate and, and cheat and whatever he's doing that made you walk away to begin with. Um, but in worst case scenario, he could injure you or, you know, even cause someone's demise. So it's very important when you decide to walk away from a narcissist that not only you have a safety plan in place um, and that you've planned out your escape before you decide to do it and you've left no indication that you're leaving, but that you go no contact and you never look back. I know that this is difficult um, if you have minor children with the narcissist, um, you know, and there's a, is a custody situation, but really try to limit your contact with this person as much as possible that's um, for your own safety. So that's the importance of going no contact. Thanks for listening.